So hey everyone, welcome back to the another video. And today in this video, we are going to discuss the problem remove outermost parentheses. This is a lead code easy question. So this will be a very interesting question because we are going to discuss the two approaches here. One with the extra space and one within which we are going to take bigger of one space. So let's discuss the problem. A valid parentheses string is either empty like this. If we, if it is not empty, we can write like this or a plus b where a and b are valid parentheses strings and plus represent the string concatenation. For example, these are all valid parentheses. These all are valid parentheses. So valid parentheses string is primitive if it is non-empty and there does not exist a way to split. Given a valid parentheses, consider its primitive decomposition like this. We have to remove the outermost parentheses of every primitive string after decomposition of S. So let's understand the problem. So for example, we are given, let's say this, um, like this, right? So we here we can say, if this is opening parentheses, it should have a closing parentheses for valid parentheses. The valid parentheses has a condition that for every opening parentheses, there should be a closing parentheses. So if we have this opening parentheses, there should be the closing parentheses. So here we can say that this is a valid parentheses. So similarly, this is also a valid parentheses. Why? Because for every opening, there is a closing. Similarly, this is also valid. Now, what is primitive decomposition here? Let's take the example. If we have, let's say this, uh, this, this, and this. So what is the primitive decomposition of this? For example, if we have started these parentheses, now, when it will end, when it will get all the like opening for every opening, there is a closing. For example, for this opening, we will find the closing. For this opening, here is a closing. For this opening, here is a closing. And for this opening, here is a closing. So this is complete valid parentheses. So here we can say this is one decomposition. Similarly, let's take another. If we have this opening parentheses, so we are going to take the closing parentheses. If we have opening parentheses, we have closing parentheses here. Similarly, for this opening parentheses, there is a closing parentheses. So this is the other decomposition. So what do you mean by decomposition? Decomposition means that for every opening parentheses, there is a closing parentheses. If this whole thing is done in between, then that means this is one of the decomposition. So in this question, they have said, Similarly, we have many decompositions here. Like for this, there is a one decomposition, second decomposition, similarly third decomposition. So what we have to do in these decompositions that, uh, for example, in this decomposition, we have to remove its outermost parentheses. Let's take some example to better understand what the question is saying. For example, this. Similarly, this. Now we here we can see this is one of the complete valid parentheses. So we can remove this outermost. Similarly, this is also a complete valid parentheses. We can remove its outermost. So after removing this outermost, here we can say the remaining string will be this only. This is the string that is left with us. So this is the answer. The question says that we have to first decompose the string. So after decomposing the strings, we have to remove their outer parentheses and after removing their outer parentheses, we have to find the final string. S simple, that is a question. Now, how can we approach this question? So let's discuss the approach one for this question. So we have the stack based approach. The problem is stack based approach. Now we have the given string. Now what we want, we want to remove these outermost parentheses, right? Similarly, we want to remove this outermost parentheses. So we want to remove this. So let's utilize the stack and find it that how we are able to remove this outermost parentheses using the stack. Let's see. For example, this is the first uh, opening parentheses. Since the stack is empty, let's understand the approach. We will get the intuition that why we are going to do this. If the stack is empty, if the stack is empty, push into stack, push into stack and don't add it to answer. Don't add it to answer. Simple. If the stack is not empty, push into stack. We are going to push into stack and we are going to add it to the answer. 
So here is the answer variable that we're going to maintain side by side for maintaining the final answer. So let's see. Since stack is empty, push it into the stack. Push it into the stack. Don't add it to the answer. Simple. Now, stack is not empty. Push it into the stack. Add into the answer. Stack is not empty. Push it into the stack. Add it to the answer. Now, we got the closing parentheses. No, we can't push. So, we can say push or pop anything. Right? So, now we can say this is closing parentheses. The pair is completed. Since the pair is completed, it will snatch it. It will say that you are completed, come out. So it will say come out. But we again push into, like add into the answer. Again, we have closing parentheses. Like we will say, okay, you are inside, come out. We are pair. We are completed. Let's come out. Now, we again add into the answer. So again, we come now. Now see. Now this is, it will snatch it. Now it will come out of the answer. Now we will say, that stack is again empty and when stack is empty push or pop into the stack but don't add it to the answer so we are not going to add into our answer so what we have observed here the observation here is that what we want for valid parentheses what is there that for every opening there is a closing simple so here we can see this is a complete decomposed parentheses that's why stack became empty stack started from empty and it again became empty. So why it became empty? Because it, so first opening parenthesis came, then again opening, opening, then closing, closing, closing. That means this is completed. If this is completed, what we want from here? We want that is outermost, outermost parentheses are removed. So here we can see that outermost parentheses are removed. Why? Because stack started from empty. So we said if stack is empty, don't push into this, like don't add into the answer. Similarly, stack ended into the empty. We again said that don't add into our answer. Simple. So similarly, let's jump onto the other decomposed string to better understand the approach. Let's see. So let's remove this all and let's again start since stack is again empty. Let's see this is stack is empty. Push it into the stack, but don't add into our answer. Similarly, stack is empty. Push into a stack, but stack is not empty. So we are going to add into our answer. Similarly, stack is not empty. We are going to say the pair is completed, come out. But we add into our answer because stack was not empty. Now, we again came, we push it. So we again add it here. Similarly, we again came. We will say, okay, you are completed, come out. But here add because stack was not again empty. Now, here we can see that again, there is a closing parenthesis. So when closing parenthesis come, it will come out. So we can say stack is empty now. If stack is empty, if stack is empty, what we can see? That our again decomposed string is completed. And we have successfully removed the outermost parentheses. Why? Because we have already said whenever there is empty stack, stack was empty, don't add it. Now again became stack empty, don't add it. So we are able to only add the in-between part. This was the intuition and approach behind this. First approach that is stack based approach. Now let's discuss the second approach. The second approach that we're going to do because this approach has big O of n time and this approach has big O of n space for the stack. For the stack. Now what we are going to do? We are going to jump to the second approach where we're going to take the big O of f1 space. So let's discuss the second approach. So here the approach is basically of maintaining the counter here. So here we are going to optimize it by removing the stack. Now let's get the approach one and what we are doing in approach one. Approach one was that, that when stack is empty, don't add into our answer. Simple. We are not adding to our answer. Simple. And if stack is not empty, then we are adding to our answer. Simple. Sim similarly, we want to do that we can maintain a counter. How? Let's understand that how we're going to maintain the counter. So we will get the intuition like why a counter will help us. For every opening parenthesis, we will do plus one. And for every closing parenthesis, we are going to do minus one. Okay. So let's see. Initially counter is zero. Then that means what counter zero is equals to means. It means 
that we are going to start the valid parentheses or we are going to end the valid parentheses. So we are going to start or end the parentheses. Valid parentheses, valid decompose parentheses. So here we can say counter is zero. So we don't add into our answer. Since this is opening parentheses, we do counter plus one as we have said here. Okay. Now let's come to this. Now here we can see that this is opening parentheses again. This is opening parentheses. So what we are going to do, we are going to do counter plus two. And since counter is not zero, let's add into our answer. Similarly come here. Now here we can see that this is a closing parenthesis. In closing parenthesis, what we are going to do? We are going to subtract the one. So we are going to subtract the one. Here it will become one. So since the counter is not zero, what that means? We can add into our answer. Now again, we have got the closing parenthesis. Here we are going to do minus one and it will become zero. So let's remove the minus one. It will become zero. Now here we can see again counter becomes zero. Since counter becomes zero, we don't add into our answer. Now what counter is equals to zero depicts. So here we got one intuition that when we were starting and when we were ending, both time we have not taken by because at both end counter was zero. Counter was zero. So here we can say that since counter is zero, we are going to remove the parentheses and in between will be taken. Similarly, let's take another part of the problem of the string and let's understand. So now counter is again zero. Here we can see counter was zero. Let's start again. So since opening parentheses, do plus one. Since counter was zero, don't take it. Now again opening parentheses, plus two. Counter is non-zero, take it. Now closing parentheses, we are going to do minus one. So counter is one. It is non-zero, push it into our answer. Again, this is opening. Do plus one, it will become two, push it. Again, it is closing, minus one, it will become one, non-zero, push it. Again, we are going to, uh, like closing parentheses, it will be minus one, it will be zero. And that means this is what? Again, counter is zero. Our valid decomposed parentheses is covered. Then that means we have successfully removed the outermost parentheses again. Now, one thing we have observed, that when we were starting, and when we were ending, there are two, two things that we have to discuss. That when we are starting, before adding the counter, before doing counter plus plus, we need to check that if counter is zero. Why? Because obviously, initially counter is zero, but when this opening parenthesis will come, counter will become one. So before this, we have to check. So whenever opening parenthesis come, we need to check before it. Because counter was initially zero. If this will come, counter will become one. But we want to check before. So that we need to check that if the like parenthesis started or not. Now, similarly, when the when we are ending, so counter after this will become zero. After completing this, counter will become zero. So whenever closing parenthesis will come, we need to check after that. Why? Because for every opening parenthesis, initially counter was zero. Then after that, we are going to plus one, plus one. Similarly, for closing parenthesis, we are going to subtract the minus one. But after the completion of this parenthesis is done, then counter will become zero. So we need to keep two things in mind whenever opening parenthesis come. For checking the counter is equals to zero, we need to check before. And whenever closing parenthesis will come, we need to check after when counter will become zero, right? So that is the idea behind the approach to what we have observed. For example, let's take this example. Let's take this example. Here we can see that counter was initially zero and we were checking before, we were checking before that is counter is equals to zero. If counter is equals to zero, then that means we are not going to add into our answer. Similarly, we do plus one, then plus one, it will become two, then minus one, it become one. Then plus one, it become two. Then minus one, it will become one. Then again, minus one, it will become zero. So after this, we have find that after this, we have find that counter is zero. So here we can properly see that counter will become zero after this. 
and counter is zero before this. So we need to take care of this condition as well. So how we are going to handle this case? So whenever, let's see that, for example, when we were traversing the loop to s dot length zero to s dot length. So whenever we have, like we said, like s of i is equal to is equal to opening bracket, then do count plus plus. And when it is closing bracket, count minus minus, simple. Now, one thing we have to understand that if we have added the count plus plus before checking the count is equals to zero, if count is equals to zero, then what we are going to say that don't take this. If count is not is equals to zero, then do answer plus is equal to S of i. This is the point that whenever count is zero, don't take this. We will not take this part. So one thing that we can observe that when S of i is equals to empty, it will become plus one. So that is the problem because we need to check before this. So for handling this case, what we can do? We can take this condition because this is only the problem. Because whenever closing parentheses will come, we can check it after that. So fine, when counter will become zero, then we can check after this. Okay. But when uh, opening parentheses will come, this will be the problem for us. It will make it plus one and we are going to check it. And at the first point, we are going to take this and that we should not take. So how we are going to handle this? So to handle this part, what we are going to do that we are going to take this condition and put it after this. Now you will say like how others will help. So let's see. For example, let's take this condition and put it after. So when we are at first point, initially count is zero. Initially count is zero. So we are going to check here. Since this condition is after, we are going to check here. Is count is not is equal to zero. No count is zero. Don't take it. Fine. So after this, we are going to do plus one and let's come here. So now this plus one will help this. It will become. Uh, so again, we will check. Yes, it's plus one. Then that means take it. Now again, it will become plus two. And we are going to check here. Now we are going to do minus and same process will continue. And at the end, at the end, since this condition is above, it will make it zero since count will be zero. And after this, since count is zero, we are not going to take the last part as well. So just the one thing we have handled that when we are starting the string for the opening parentheses, we are going to take this part later on so that, so that when it will become one, it will create the problem. But if we create the one later on after checking the count, then that will help us in dealing with this problem. So this is the idea. So let's code up the approach. But before that, let's understand the time complexity. Time complexity is big of n because we are going to travel the string. But space complexity will be big of 1 because we are maintaining a single counter and there is no problem in that. So we have initially the counter and we are going to travel the string. So what we have said that if s of i is equal to equal to opening parentheses, we are going to do counter plus plus. And if s of i is equal to equal to closing parentheses, we are going to do counter minus minus. Now we have said that if counter is not is equal to zero, we are going to push into our answer. String answer is equal to empty. So what we are going to do? Answer dot push back s of i. Now what we have said that initially count is zero, count will become one for opening parentheses and we are going to take this opening parentheses as well, which we don't want to take. So what we can deal, how we can deal this problem, we can take this condition later on. We can take this condition later on. So counter will become plus one later on. But before that, we are going to check that if counter is not is equal to zero, if it is not zero, then push into our answer and just add then return our answer. So let's run the code and check whether it's working fine. Yes. So let's submit the code. So yes, it's totally working fine. So this was all about code. If you like the explanation, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and have a nice day.